Welcome folks. It is Friday, September the 5th. This is Hurricane Hub Live. I'm Chief Meteorologist Tim Pandagis. And tonight on HHL, yeah, we're still talking about Invest 91L, but there have been some big changes to its future, its potential future. It's struggling out there with lots of dry air surrounding it and some wind shear. In fact, it's possible it doesn't even develop at all in the Gabrielle, which is the next name on our list. However, in the other basin, the Eastern Pacific, it remains very active. We've got Kiko, we've got what's left of Lorena, which has actually been, um, they've stopped issuing uh, advisories on it because it's just completely fallen apart. So now we just have Kiko left and it's still a category four. major hurricanes maintain that status now for almost three days. And it's headed towards Hawaii. Uh, there's been a little bit of shift in the cone, taking it to the north of the islands, but of course that can always change and shift a little bit farther to the south. It will be weakening, though, as it gets closer to the islands uh, early next week. All right, in terms of tropical Atlantic activity, we should be seeing a big ramp up in activity in the Atlantic Basin this time of the year. We're five days out, less than a week from the peak at September the 10th. But there's really hardly anything going on out there. Of course, we just have... Invest 91L, which if I didn't point it out, I don't think you could really find it. There's not much out there, not much associated with it. It's very, very weak and falling apart as we speak. Elsewhere in the basin, it's rather quiet. And I've heard a lot of rumblings on social media comparing this year with what we experienced in 2013. A quick summary of that year. We had 14 named storms and only two became hurricanes. It was actually the ninth least active hurricane season on record with well below average activity. Now we've only had six named storms so far this season. So if we were to come close to that, we'd still need another eight named storms for the rest of the season. So that would warrant at least some more activity out there to track. But you know, right now there's not much. Here's the latest update from the Hurricane Center as of eight o'clock on 91L. Now yesterday when we talked about 91L, it had just been tagged as an invest, investigative area. And it was moving to the west at 10. It's even slower now. It is just crawling. You can, you can literally outrun this system. Uh, and the chances of it developing into our next name system have been slashed significantly. It was nearly certain, Hurricane Center said, 90% chances of at least a tropical depression over the next seven days. And now that's down to 60%. That's moderate odds now. We've dropped to low chances within the short term. That was up to as high as 60% yesterday. So what's going on with this system? Well, just look at it. It is struggling. We're barely seeing any convection out there on visible on infrared satellite imagery. And as we talked about yesterday, it is pretty much surrounded by a lot of dry, stable air. And what you're seeing here in the rust color to the northwest of whatever's left of this is some Saharan dust still prevalent in the Atlantic Basin. Typically, when we get closer to the peak of season, we start to see that kind of retreat farther to the north. Not so much here in 2025. That's certainly impacting it and leading it towards the west. There's a lot more of that dry, stable air. So it's just not conducive for tropical development here. And we've got a lot of sinking motion out there as well. We would need some rising motion to facilitate the convection or the thunderstorm development there. And I mean, it just is not very impressive at all on imagery and if visible satellite imagery was to show up you'd see that there's at least some broad spin but until we get some convection of fire along it organization is is going to be very very slow or just not happen at all we're still getting getting model uh, outputs on this and it hasn't really changed since yesterday last 24 hours it still generally tracks this for the next seven days here we take it out to um, to the west and eventually acquires more of a west northwest component towards the leeward islands about next friday at that point in time it'll probably it could just be an open wave which would still bring some tropical squalls to the area so there would still be some minor impacts but the likelihood of it being a name system an organized system looks lower at this hour a lot of models have just given up hope on this developing at all and just basically gone poof and remember yesterday we were talking about there just wasn't model consistency or agreement. The GFS was really the only one showing this developing at all. European was showing some signals of it, but it's really been downplaying it ever since uh, days ago. And the GFS now is coming into uh, that same very solution as well, not showing much at all. I'll show you the comparison now, okay, because we're going to jump out here several days, go through the upcoming weekend, and we're not seeing anything on the models through the middle of next week. 
showing sort of any development. And I've got it fine-tuned here to show development of at least a sub 10.10 millibar low. So we're not even seeing that, and that's a very weak storm. Nothing. We jump out to the end of next week, seven days' time, and then there's the euro. Look at where it is, though. Way to the north, there's Bermuda. The European solution right now is showing this wave traveling off to the west-northwest and then turning, recurving out to sea, and then starting to show some signs of developing as it heads probably east of Bermuda. GFS abandons all development at all in its most recent run. Now, is this something that's going to be, you know, it started not showing anything? Is it going to continue that way? The issues it's seeing could resolve, and we could still see some development on this. But as you saw with the outlook from the Hurricane Center, the chances have really dropped. And then going farther out in time here, next Monday, I mean, there's the European. That's the only thing showing anything out there. However, in the Eastern Pacific, and as we've seen time and again, when the Eastern Pacific is active, we tend not to see very much going on in the Atlantic Basin. It's very rare we get both basins firing off storms at the same time. It's happened, but it's more rare. And a lot of that's because when the East Pack is firing, when we get the convection, we get the increased amount of wind shear, the exhaust from these storms gets displaced out in the Atlantic Basin, increases the wind shear, and shuts down the basin. But with Kiko way out here, almost in the Central Pacific, likely not causing that much in the way of wind shear there. So it's just the dry, stable air that's going to be the most um, uh, not very conducive for tropical development. All right, back to Kiko. We're at cap four out there right now, 130 mile per hour wind. So low end cap four, but still cap four. It's been that way now for almost three days. It does slowly weaken as it builds to the northwest. OK, it's actually expected to strengthen a little bit more here up to 140 mile per hour winds. And then the newest cone does shift it farther to the north and east, still clipping Honolulu on the far southern southwestern portion of that cone. And the model output on this does show a significant uh, divergence here. Pretty much after we get past later in the weekend, notice how some of these models do drive it farther to the south here. Uh, but a good portion of them do keep it within that cone, keeping it to the north um, east of the Hawaiian Islands. We'll see likely still some residual impacts there. It will be on a weakening trend, so that's the good news there. Not No major impacts are expected, at least right now. All right, coming up after a quick break, we're going to look back at a few storms. we got Hurricanes Fran and Francis that made landfall this week uh, in, back in history. And, of course, Tropical Trivia, too, coming up after a quick break.
Welcome back to Hurricane Hub Live. On this day in 2004, the center of Hurricane Francis reached Sewell's Point, Florida as a Category 2 hurricane. Hurricane Francis was the second most intense tropical cyclone in the Atlantic during the 2004 season. This is video from that storm that we found on YouTube from well-known meteorologist and storm chaser, Mr. Reed Timmer. Francis became a Category 4 hurricane on August 28th, while about 700 miles east of the Lesser Antilles. Days later, the nearly 70-mile diameter eye of Francis crossed the Florida coast near Sewell's Point. The southern eye wall affected the extreme northeast portion of Palm Beach County. Now, Francis moved over, moved farther inland, just north of Lake Okeechobee, and crossed the entire Florida peninsula, exiting into the Gulf just north of Tampa. It made a second landfall as a tropical storm in the eastern portion of the Florida Panhandle. All right, over to Tropical Trivia now, folks. Yesterday's question was, what was the name of the first storm that had been labeled a PTC or potential tropical cyclone? We've got to go back to the 2017 season. That's when the National Hurricane Center first started using that term. And that storm that got that first designation was Brett in 2017. And this was the definition of a low rider. That's South America there, folks. And that's Tropical Storm Brett. It was designated a PTC because it just didn't have its act together just yet, but it still enabled them to issue watches and warnings, which was necessary as it was going to be impacting land right before it became a tropical storm. All right, folks, that's the latest for tonight on Hurricane Hub Live. Remember, we're here seven nights a week at 8 p.m. for the latest on any tropical developments. We'll see you back here tomorrow night with Hunter Forrest at 8 p.m. on Saturday.